Conference play opens up for the Spartans today as they welcome IIT to Spartan Athletic Park. You heard it. We're here in Montgomery, Illinois, and this is Northern Athletics Collegiate Conference Men's Lacrosse featuring the Spartans of Aurora University and the Scarlet Hawks of the Illinois Institute of Technology. Happy Wednesday afternoon. Not quite evening yet, right? Let's go with afternoon here. My name is Sean Fry. Aurora coming in at four and five. They've dropped three in a row, and it's been a bit of a tough sled for them of late. Lost to Illinois Wesleyan over the weekend, 19 to 10. A very good Titans team that was able to outshoot Aurora by nine and take a 17 faceoff advantage, 25 to eight. They doubled up Aurora on ground balls, and it was really the decisive quarter in the third where Aurora was down three at halftime and then outscored eight to two and allowed it to get away despite the best efforts of Rylan Pura and Jimmy Garecki who each scored a hat trick for the Spartans. During this three game skit Aurora has been outshot by 60. They've won less than 40 percent of their faceoffs. They've only been able to clear the zone two out of every three times and opponents have gone seven and seven for nine on extra man opportunities. That have been an area of strength for Aurora prior to this little skid. But the good news for Aurora, that was just the end of non-conference play. The NAC schedule has the lid lifted tonight. And so four and five coming in overall, but the slate is clean in league play. And Aurora looking to do one better than they did last season when they finished second in the conference and eventually lost the tournament championship to Benedictine. Aurora would love to go one better in the standings and in the conference tournament. So that journey begins today. For Illinois Tech, it's already started. They were home to MSOE on Saturday. Lost 11-5 to in that one. It was tied at three at halftime, and like with Aurora against Illinois Wesley, and it got away from the Scarlet Hawks in the third quarter. They were outscored 8-2. to They were outshot by only six, but how about this for a statistic? They lost all 19 faceoffs in the contest. They were minus 17 on ground balls and they went 0 for 6 on extra man opportunities that's not going to do it at all so Illinois Tech comes in at 3 and 5 including 0 and 1 in the conference the Scarlet Hawks were picked to finish 6th of 9 teams in the league we'll see if they are able to improve on those preseason projections and getting a win today here against Aurora would be a big step in the right direction of course it would be a big step in Aurora's direction if the Spartans can get the home W in their league opener here today. And so in less than seven minutes, we'll have the opening face off here and see which way things are going to go here to start conference play for Aurora game number 10 of the season. And it's on the way here at athletics.aurora.edu.
Illinois Tech on the way here on this Wednesday. The rain has fallen. We had clouds most of the day, and just in time for lacrosse, we've decided to enjoy the rain. So it's 53 degrees here. Looks like the rain's going to move out. It's a passing shower. We might have another one drop in before too long. It's breezy. Got winds up to about 20, 25 miles per hour and blowing from the south. So the wind could certainly be an issue. And I think you might even be able to see it there on the camera where the flag is, and you sure can. It is blowing straight out next to the scoreboard. So uh, it's windy out there, and that will need to be dealt with. And, of course, the field will be slick. And, you know, what, what would it be? Uh, home lacrosse match, men's or women's here this season, if the weather wasn't awful. So we'll just deal with it as we typically do here. The Aurora and Illinois Tech getting set for the opening face-off here in a matter of moments. This is the only one on the agenda today. The other teams played yesterday. It was Beloit winning at Concordia Chicago 7-5. Concordia Wisconsin hammered Edgewood 18-3. MSOE was a 20 to eight winner at home against Marion. And then coming up on Saturday, Aurora home to Marion in the back end of a double header as women's lacrosse will also host Marion at 11 a.m. MSOE will be at Concordia Chicago. Concordia Wisconsin visits Benedictine and Illinois Tech. The visitors today will be the hosts on Saturday against Edgewood. You gotta keep an eye on faceoffs. Couple of teams that have struggled in the face-off circle, so to speak, here this season. Aurora, really good in that category last season. They had the advantage in 15 of 17, only twice this year, and they're at under 42% for the season. So that's, as you might imagine, not great. And in fact, it puts them sixth of ninth. Illinois Tech's behind them even. They're seventh at just 32%. They've only had the face-off advantage once this season. They dominated that against Northwestern St. Paul. Oh, it's been an issue. Something has to break. And we'll find out which team's able to generate a little bit of offense by getting into their attacking zone early. We've got a special presentation coming up here in a moment that we're excited to bring you. And you can't see them right now, but you will in a moment here as they are pulling out in front of the field as we've got a very special guest to sing the national anthem. So do stay with us. Hello out there on Glory Energy's Spartan Athletic Park for today's Northern Athletics Collegiate Conference matchup. Featuring the visiting Scarlet Hawks of the Illinois Institute of Technology in your Spartans of Aurora University. So, as we prepare here for the National Anthem, we are pleased to be joined by members of the Riverside City College Chamber Singers all the way from Southern California. And they are directed by John Byan, the father of Aurora University attack man, Mikhail Byan. And so here they go. Side City College Chamber Singers, Southern California. Happy to have them here today. And a well-deserved round of applause. Let's meet those starting lineups today, folks. First for the visiting Scarlet Hawks of the Illinois Institute of Technology out of Chicago. In goal, the junior from Dana Point, California, Zane Handy. It'll be his ninth start. 
a 514 save percentage at a 10.61 goals against average. In front of him on defense, a sophomore from St. Louis, Seamus Keneally, and a senior from Sumner, Washington, Nehemiah Green. In the midfield, a junior out of Seattle, Reed Tangeman. A junior from Brighton, Michigan, Ryan Arbor. A freshman from Woodland Hills, California, Jackson Brass. Out of Bay Village, Ohio, a sophomore, Henry Rankin. And a junior out of Simsbury, Connecticut, Spencer Meese. On attack today, a freshman from Hal, New Jersey, Jonathan Vital, And a freshman from Haydenville, Massachusetts. It will be Yano Porter. Aurora, uh, Illinois Tech, three and five on the season, 0 and one in the NAC. And Dan Sharbaugh is the head coach here in year three with IIT. Now the starters for the host Spartans of Aurora University. Philip Gianelli, the senior from Salisbury, Maryland, gets the start. It'll be number 10 for him. The Parkside High School alum has a 12.58 goals against average and a 452 save percentage here through about half of the season. In front of him on defense, the freshman from Dover, New Hampshire. Mason Soucy and a junior out of Crown Point, Indiana. Ethan Dosen in the midfield, taking the faceoffs. The junior from Long Beach, California, Luke Hill. From Appleton, Wisconsin, a junior, Connor Heft. From Monee, Illinois, a senior, Jimmy Gorecki. And a freshman from Tacoma, Washington, Benjamin Jasper. They'll be joined by a graduate from San Diego, Justin Gakin. On attack today from Warrington, Virginia, a freshman, Rylan Pura, and the sophomore from Huntington Beach, California, Brody McDonald. Aurora led by Reed Mayberry, head coach. They are four and five on the season and opening conference play here today. The officials for today's contest, Scott Rogowski, Tom Connolly, and Matthew Bessler. And of course, our thanks go to the Aurora University game day crew, including our camera operator, Ethan Carmine, who is, I have to say, really enjoyed the smooth pan out from the video board and flag to the performers here today. That was expert. And so we're happy to have Ethan here with us today. Aurora will start here in the first quarter in their home white uniforms, moving right to left. Illinois Tech wearing red. And they will go left to right. And soon we will be underway in this Wednesday afternoon contest at Spartan Athletic Park. Mentioned Aurora struggles in the faceoff spot here this season. Same for Illinois Tech, who will get the upper hand in the very early going. The ball emerges, and it'll be IIT getting the first look, but Aurora will end up with it here. And I think this is it offside. a little bit too anxious there to get into the midfield and so Aurora will have it and here's Zach Bernstein getting underway and he'll be joined by Mikhail Bayan so the Spartans with the first possession here in our contest this is Ben Strub he's been sensational here he drops it in the middle of the field and the ground ball is scooped up by Arbor who then has it taken right back from Strupp. Five goals against North Central, added another one against Illinois Wesleyan, and adding to his ground ball total here. He's been a force as a freshman here through the middle part of the season. Zach Bernstein's been a force for three seasons. He has it here and takes it out near the logo for Aurora. Bernstein tossing it out to Bayan and swung over to the right side. A fought from Strub, a shot and scores to make it one to nothing. Strub with his 19th of the season. From a sharp angle and able to pump that past Zane Handy. Aurora on the board first for the sixth time this season. And Strub has made it three straight with a tally for the Spartans. Just a minute and 11 seconds into this contest. Aurora on the board. Strub stumbled and then just beat Handy. It looked like up over the shoulder. Aurora takes the face off and they'll try to go two to nothing here in the early going. Mitchell Young from Oswego, the senior, swinging it over to McDonald on the left wing.
hung up to Carson Leader, the freshman from Lincoln, Nebraska, and he'll find Anthony Carreri out of Huntington Beach, California, another freshman. And Aurora already showing off its depth as Young gets a look here on the left. He had it cocked, lost it as he went to get rid of it. He regains, and Aurora will work around the perimeter here. There's a pass through the middle of the field. It was defended, and here comes Henry Rankin the other way. All-conference honorable mention selection last season for Spencer Meese, and a long toss here to the near side into the cross of Brock Melanson out of Yorba Linda, California. And he will put Illinois Tech into its offense for the first time today. Two and a half minutes elapsed. Quarter number one here, Aurora up one to nothing. Scarlet Hawks looking for the equalizer as Tangeman has it here. Up top for Meese. Swung over to the near side for Brass. Brass has been terrific this season for the Scarlet Hawks. 18 goals. Just got passed for the tie for ninth that he was in with Ben Strub. It's a pass into the turf here that was handled by Meese. And then he turns. And that shot got blocked down in front. I don't know if it ever made it on to Gianelli. Aurora able to get the ground ball. And it remains one to nothing as Aurora hustles it down the field. That pass missed, and Rankin scoops it up. And Aurora trying to press the pace a little bit, but out over the proverbial skis a little bit there, and they turn it right back over, and the birds get another look here as the flag comes out. Two flags come out. And it looks like Aurora is going to be down a man here very early. One on each side of the field. We'll see if it's the same call. Here is Tangeman. His pass is defended. Counter Heft has it. Whistle blows, and Aurora will be on its man down defense. And it's Jimmy Gorecki who goes over to have a seat. 11-15 left here in the first. one nothing Spartans. Illinois Tech. Spartan penalty at deck number nine, Jimmy Gorecki. 30 seconds for offsides. And it's 30 seconds for offsides here, but Illinois Tech has been punchless with the man up. They are two for 25. 8% has not been great, and unsurprisingly, that puts them last in the conference. Or as man down defense, fifth in the league at 71%. So the Hawks will have to be quick. But there haven't been a lot of goals in this situation this season. Behind the goal, Arbor with it. Swings it out to the left side. It goes up top for Meese. Right side now, back to Meese. And the penalty has expired now as Gorecki comes back into the play. But Illinois Tech content to maintain possession and look for a better chance. Meese to his right. Lost it. 15 to shoot. Meese driving. He's pushed off the post by Bernstein that time. Now just 10 to work with here. A long possession for the Scarlet Hawks. No shots. Five to shoot. Long distance shot here, and that will not test Phil Gianelli. As Arbor, that would have needed to have been a butte to beat Gianelli from that spot. And with the shot clock running down. Needed a little bit of help, and Aurora goes the other way now. Kyle Bosshart advances it. He'll peel off, and Zach Bernstein gets it near midfield. Under 10 to play in our first quarter. 1-0 Aurora. Two shots each way. First man-up opportunity for IIT. Went quietly. Strub, right side, scored near this spot earlier in the contest, tries again. That one is deflected, and Karam's out of play and into the netting. Spartans bring it back in. Pura trying to get to the post. And then his centering pass, looked like he fanned on it, ended up getting a shot off, but Handy was ready for that. And it remains 1-0. Illinois Tech, one of the best in the league. In fact, they are the best in the league at clearing their own end at 83%. They normally get it back and over the line, and they do here. They are now three for three in that category. So this season, it hasn't been for a lack of opportunity for the Scarlet Hawks. They haven't scored consistently enough. Here, Melanson was overtaken by Aurora defenders. 
managed to stay with it and get possession back for the visitors. And it goes up for Jackson Brass. who will move off to his left. Spinning, but cut off there by a couple of Aurora defenders and then lost it on the pass. Gets it back, 20 to 27 to shoot actually. I thought it was 20. Here is Melanson. He can't get inside. And then ended up not only losing it from his cross, but then batting it with his hand. But they'll call a foul on Aurora first. 15 to shoot. Juan Bajorquez with it. Junior from Bogota, Colombia. Dishes it off to the far side here. Porter. Had to reset the shot clock here, so make it 50 seconds still to work with. But a turnover. Take away here by Mason Susi. Oh, rather by Phil Gianelli. Makes the save on Brass. They did not think Brass got that one off, but Gianelli able to make the stop, and then Aurora turns it over, trying to move back up the other way. We're near the midpoint of the first quarter. Oh, it hasn't really been very sharp for Aurora right now on offense. Defensively, it's been very good. Hasn't been much there for IIT. And Aurora has been a bit sloppy trying to advance the ball and get looks on offense. We'll see if that improves as the game continues. Moving to his right, here's Meese. Carrying it behind the goal for Porter. He can't get to the middle of the field. This is where Illinois Tech has been. If there was grass, there would be downtrodden paths on the perimeter here. That's all that Aurora's allowed. Tangeman not able to beat Kyle Bosshart that time, and it goes behind the goal. 30 to shoot. Under seven to play in the first. One nothing Aurora. Arbor out on the left wing. Spins right. Takes a couple of cracks from Connor Heft and then swings his shot wide. 6.43 to play here in the first. One nothing Aurora. And it's Brass bringing it back in here. Gets all the way to the post shot. And a save made by Gianelli. No, blocked actually that time. Well, they do give it a save to Gianelli after all. He's able to get out there and keep this one one to nothing. And now Mason Susi goes the other way. And we saw Susi score against Calvin when he let one fly from about 30 yards out with the Goalkeeper out of the crease. No such opportunity here. Spartans get into their offense. You got six minutes remaining in the first. It's one nothing. Carreri behind the goal for Pura. Pass too strong. Been a lot of that here in the first quarter. Aurora's already turned it over four times. And I'm not sure that more than the very first one was forced either. All just been errant passes. Otherwise. So here come the Hawks with Porter. Out here to Ty Dwyer from Lindenhurst, Illinois. Calling his name for the first time and dealing with Ben Jasper. All over Dwyer here. And swung back for Arbor. Trying to get away from Mitchell Young to his right, looking for a lane on the goal. Comes back to his left. That shot at the post. And Aurora gets the ground ball. So now with under five minutes to play here in the first. Another turnover for Aurora and Illinois Tech. Gives it right back. McDonald loses his stick. And Young picks up the ground ball. And Aurora the other way in transition. Gorecki tries to get to the post. Hit the post. And it remains 1-0. Spartans maintain possession, but Gorecki got right to the edge of the goal crease and put it off the woodwork. 420 remaining in the first, it's one nothing. Bayan driving, shot blocked down in front. 
thing that might have gone off of Gorecki. Loose ball gathered by Bernstein. 25 left on the shot clock as that never made it on. Strub behind the goal. Looking for a screen here. He's got 12 to work with. Turns the corner, shoots. Save made by Handy. Maybe needed another step to open up the angle that time, but not able to defeat the junior goalkeeper. Three and a half and change. The ball on the turf here. And I'm not exactly sure what carom that was, but it ended up going all the way back to Zane Handy and swung forward, and it's going to be Aurora with possession here. That was quite a bounce. Illinois Tech, good defense getting back that time by Seamus Keneally as Jimmy Gorecki was winding the fire, and he had a lane, and Keneally took it away. Still one nothing. IIT clears. That's their sixth in seven tries. It's still one to nothing. Aurora has five turnovers. It's been a bit bumpy down on that end. Really only one, maybe two good looks for Illinois Tech. Here's another, and it's in the back of the net. Yano Porter, 12th goal of the season, made quite a splash with three against Cornell in his collegiate debut and the Northampton High School alum has tied it up with 247 remaining in the opening quarter. Well, and I think this really goes to show that Aurora has squandered a few opportunities to get up field and get set up and Illinois Tech just won too many opportunities and finally able to get on level terms here. A face-off violation here on Aurora. They had won the first two face-offs. They dropped this one here. And the Scarlet Hawks, for the first time, will have an opportunity to go in front. Jackson Brass here on the near side for IIT. Takes it behind the goal. He'll work it out to the far side where it comes into the stick of Melanson. Big wide turn here. Uh, Kyle Bosshart all over him, so Melanson regroups. Now a try here for Tangeman. Nothing there for him either. He'll work it behind for Porter. Midway through the shot clock here. Two and change remaining in the first. One all. Aurora and Illinois Tech. Porter out to the left. Spencer Meese has it. He goes to his left. Bosshart's all over him. Now Meese tries again, shoots, and that was taken out of his stick. Connor Heft gathers it up. It's his second ground ball here in the first quarter. Comes out the left side as Gianelli settles things for Aurora. Heft still going, breaks center, swings it behind for Ryland Pura. Got 90 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Aurora will have to get a shot off in that stretch. But they have it in their attacking half. McDonald on the wing left side. For Pura. And now a switch here. Strub takes it behind the goal. Final minute of the first. Strub drops it for Pura. He tried to get to the post. Late close. IIT. Pura. Cox fires and scores from the tough angle. And he has scored in five straight here with 55 seconds to play in the first. 12th of the year for Pura. Coming off a three goal day on Saturday. And Aurora inches in front here in the late stages of the quarter. Now the face-off here will be gathered by Susie, but a violation here on Aurora. And so the Scarlet Hawks will have an opportunity to equalize before the end of the frame. For the 
season, Illinois Tech has outscored its opponents in the first quarter. Aurora right now is minus 11, but ahead here in this quarter. Porter on the near side, swings it, finds its way up top here for Tangeman. Goes to his right, gets a lane, and scores through Gianelli's legs with 16 seconds to play in the quarter. And Tangeman has his 10th of the year. And we may be going into the second quarter at two apiece. Illinois Tech goal scored by number three, Reed. So Tangeman has made it seven straight games with a goal. Face off a 50-50 affair here. A lot of time running off here, and Illinois Tech ends up fumbling that ground ball. And who's going to have it here? Apparently Aurora with 6.8 seconds left. So there's the whistle, and the Spartans will have to hurry Carson Leader, centering feed, into the popping to Mitchell Young, and he's denied at the buzzer as Zane Handy goes to the butterfly. Josh Boyko would be proud of that one. And it is two all through 15 minutes here at Spartan Athletic Park. Aurora and Illinois Tech tied up is AU men's lacrosse. Two all through a quarter at Spartan Athletic Park. Teams have alternated goals. Aurora opened it up very quickly. In fact, they only needed about a minute and 10 seconds to put that first one in the back of the goal. Illinois Tech able to answer with 2.47 left and then a couple of goals in the final minute one each way, and now the teams switch ends. Spartans left to right, wearing their home white uniforms. Illinois Tech right to left in red. Charging up field here for Aurora on the opening possession is Luke Hill after winning the faceoff. He is four for six on the day. Four for five on the day, as a matter of fact, actually. Did one better. Aurora getting set up. They outshot Illinois Tech 10 to 7 for the first quarter. They turned it over five times. They were minus three in that area. And generally speaking, they were not sharp. Mikhail Bayan able to turn the corner here. And then you could say he missed the release point on that shot a little bit as he missed the goal by a solid 10 yards. But Aurora keeps possession. So it's not going to hurt them too much. They still have another 25 seconds to work with. Here is Andy Trineri looking to get to the net. He has to give it up to Strub. And now to McDonald, who's out on the left wing. 15 on the shot clock. McDonald 
to the right side here. Trinari steps around his defender, rips the shot wide, and Aurora will have seven seconds to work with. The official directs, I believe that's Mikhail Bayan back to a spot. So this will be a tough angle look here for Aurora, and it will roll wide of the goal, and the shot clock will expire. Well, a good series for the Scarlet Hawk defense to open the second, and they will go the other way on offense. They're now seven for eight on clears. That's what they do. Has not translated to wins necessarily as much as I'm sure Dan Charbon and company would like, but and get a look at their first lead here if they can put it in the back of the net. And Aurora defense has made it hard on the Scarlet Hawks. Tangeman looks for his second of the day here and skips the shot wide. Birds keep it. Down to the far side here for Brass. Back to his left to the middle of the field. He'll toss it out, Arbor. Slipped for a moment, backs it out. Tangeman, nothing there. And out here to Brass. Goes behind the goal. Lost for a moment by Porter and now out to Meese on the near side. 20 to shoot, here's Brass looking for it. To his right, fires, save made Gianelli. And the Scarlet Hawks will get another try at it here. So a fresh 60 for the Scarlet Hawks. Centering feed looking for Tangeman. And it ended up being snared by Connor Heft. He'll give it to Gianelli. Now Aurora will look to exit their own end. Five for seven to this point in the game. Dan Latta will shepherd it across center here. And across the attacking line here for Aurora. Trinari had four goals and an assist last season in two games against Illinois Tech. Had it for a moment. Carson Leader behind the goal for Pura. 11.38 left. Second quarter. It's two all. No scoring here yet in the second quarter. Aurora plus five, 31 to 26, outscoring opponents in the second. Illinois Tech minus two. And a turnover here, takeaway by Brock Melanson that time. No, oh, rather by Ben Malloy, a freshman from Westminster, Colorado. And the Hawks advance it the other way and get set up on offense. Dwyer. Hash marks on the football field. Swings it up top for Melanson. Melanson still cradling it here for Illinois Tech. Moving left and then a maybe a miss on the switch that time. And I think Melanson had a lane to the post and didn't take it. Ended up almost turning it over on a pass. Brass gathers it. It comes out for Dwyer. He tries to get to the middle of the field. Now shoots, skips it in. Gianelli slams the door. And that'll be his sixth save on a good look from Illinois Tech. He keeps it 2-2. Back the other way. Here's Bernstein. Kicks it out to the left. Shoveled down to the near side. Shot off the side of the goal from Pura. That fooled a few fans who thought that one tickled the back of the goal. Illinois Tech gains possession. Under 10 to play in the second, 2-2. Two, two. Hesitation here by Rankin, and then he'll bounce it over the center line for the successful clear. IIT getting set up. Evenly matched contest so far. Tangeman, shot from distance, hops wide of the goal. Not a particularly great opportunity there. You're looking for a little bit of luck from out there. Hawks keep it. Melanson, the near side. There, Tangeman trying here to his right. He'll bounce it out for Brass. 
far from the goal, moves to his right, takes it behind the cage. Out to the left side for Tangeman. And his pass was dangerous, and it was jumped by Connor Heft. Aurora with the turnover caused this time, and here's Kyle Bosshart. Aurora for a moment with numbers, but a bad pass was into the feet of Ben Strub, and Illinois Tech goes the other way. They turn it right back over. I don't know that either team is going to put the last minute on the highlight reel. Eight and a half left. We remain tied at two apiece. Bernstein trying to take it to the net, shoots wide. Laura will maintain possession. 15th shot. They've landed seven on goal. Here's a look from Strub that was blocked in front as Meese got a piece of that. Aurora able to hustle back, get the ground ball, and Trineri gets a lane. And Zane Handy says no. That one was labeled for the top corner. But the cross was there. And we remain tied. IIT able to clear here as Arbor picks it up. For Horquez, for Meese, and out to Arbor on the right wing. Arbor off the side of the goal. Picked up by Porter as one of the two Scarlet Hawk goals. Up top where Meese has it to his right. Tried to get to the net, does save made Gianelli. And Aurora will have possession. Two all. Under seven to play. Gianelli has stood tall today, seven saves. Illinois Tech hasn't had a ton of offense here today, but they've had some high quality looks and Gianelli has Played very well so far. He's had to. The Aurora defense really keeping this one, I think, very close because Aurora's offense just has not gotten on track here today. They'll try again here with under six and a half to play in the second quarter. 2-2 two, two is the score. Here is leader from distance wide of the goal. I don't know if that's a great look from out there. There'll be 32 seconds left on the shot clock here. McDonald Come on, Cody. Come on, Cody. loses it. And then precious seconds winding off the clock here. It does go up and is taken by Trineri. Aurora has 15 seconds left this time down the field. Leader on the left. Up top for Strub, he's got a cannon and we'll likely see it here, six to shoot. Strub from 20 yards out, save made by Handy. But Aurora will get another try at it here as that one was on the goal. And now Handy has made seven saves. So a new 60 here for Aurora. Still two all, 5.30 to play in the second. No one has beat a goalkeeper here in this second frame. Young, back here for Pura. Looking to see what's open. Illinois Tech has not made things easy defensively for Aurora. It's been a struggle today. A slip defender, a shot was blocked. It's loose in front. It rolls into the crease and Handy is able to get to it. Use the goal as a pick that time, and the Hawks will look to exit here. Aurora has outshot Illinois Tech 20 to 13. And they have not outscored them. Dwyer has it for Illinois Tech as they clear successfully a pass to Tangeman near side to his left. 
Back to his right, a pump fake. Shot first time was blocked. And it looked like that time Heft was able to get a piece, but it came right back to Tangerman. And Illinois Tech tries again. Melanson with it on the left. And we'll swing it up top for Tangerman and out for Brass. He's not able to get past Ethan Dosen. Then he hits the deck. And Dosen not able to win that battle. It was close. Dwyer was able to get over there. Now Illinois Tech running out of time. Tend to shoot here. Tangerman to his left. Six seconds, Brass will get a shot from distance here, and Gianelli able to hang on to that. Still two all. Gianelli, after his eighth save, dishes it away. And Aurora able to clear, Latta, nice to stay with it there on the near side. We got under 320, uh, 330 now, 320 exactly to play here in the second quarter. It's 2-2. Two -two. No score in this second quarter. Illinois Tech, I think, will take a low scoring contest. They can get it. They've held the single digits six times in eight games this season. So, this is the type of game that they likely need to. Able to win against a high-powered Aurora team. Zach Bernstein able to slip one past Handy here and put Aurora back into the lead. Three to two with 2.46 remaining in the first half. Bernstein with a goal in his sixth straight. He's got 16 on the season. He's extended his scoring streak to 25 games uh, make that 26 games with a point. And now we'll see if Aurora can hang on to this lead into the locker room. They could not do it in the final minute of the first. They win this faceoff. They've won six of eight now, or five of seven. That was already updated. Our stats crew is very much on it here today. There's no lag on our live stats today. Good internet, great crew. Love to see it. 2.15 here to play in the first half. Bernstein on the right side. He has one. He looks for two. Swings it out to the right side. Great look. Ben Strub, four to two Spartans. Second of the day for the freshman and number 20 of his freshman season. And Aurora scores twice in 49 seconds to double up the Scarlet Hawks here. 157 remaining in our opening half. As finally, a little bit of breathing room here. A long way to go. I think if you're Aurora, you'd feel very good about things if you could tack on one more before the end of the period. And they'll win this face off as Heft. Now makes it six for eight here. Well, there is currently about a 10 second difference. Well, I'm way off here, folks. About a, <laughs> a minute and two second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Look from distance. Leader not able to put that one on target. Aurora has possession. Right side. Bernstein swings that wide of the goal. 
Well, the shot volume has certainly been in Aurora's favor. Finally starting to get some better looks here late in the period. McDonald to leader on the left side. He gets it into the middle for Gorecki, and that is blocked. As Richard Warder may not love the after effects of that tomorrow. The junior from Sumner, Washington with a big block in front. Centering pass here, Gorecki puts it in the back of the net. Good feed, and it's 5-2. And Gorecki has scored in three straight. He had a hat trick on Saturday. He has 17 on the year. Three goal lead for Aurora with 49.2 ticks to play and Andy Trenary will be credited with the assist here before halftime. And now if you're Illinois Tech, it's about getting off the field here only down three. And the way Aurora has been winning faceoffs, and they do again, this might not be over here. Illinois Tech had an opportunity there to win that faceoff and at least run the clock down, and instead it'll be Aurora with the last quality look of this first half. And indeed, Strub will just hang on to it on the logo. 20 seconds. Strub goes to his left, fakes the pass, shoots, and scores for the third time today. And a barrage by Aurora late in the second quarter. They will score three times in the final two minutes, four times in the final 246. And folks, there's still 13.7 seconds left and Illinois Tech hasn't won a face off in a long time. They don't win one here. Aurora will get one more chance. Hill spins away from a defender. Finds Dosen over his head on the left side. That will do it here for the first half. Big finish for Aurora. Take a four goal lead in the halftime. Spartan six, Illinois Tech two. We'll bring you the halftime totals coming up. This is Aurora University men's lacrosse.
Six to two, Aurora with a flurry at the end of the first half to pull away from an all-square 2-2 game in the final four minutes of play. Aurora had all four goals in the second quarter. Ben Strub has put up three plus an assist today. Also goals for Jimmy Gorecki, Zach Bernstein, Rylan Pura. Andy Trenary has an assist for Illinois Tech. It's Reed Tangeman and Yano Porter with the goals. Phil Gianelli, eight saves, seven for Zane Handy. Aurora outshot Illinois Tech 27 to 15. One eight of 10 faceoffs. They get another one here. Glad you're with us. I'm Sean Fry, Ethan Carmine helping out on the camera. Spartans going right to left here in their home white uniforms and Illinois Tech. They are the Scarlet Hawks. And as you might guess by the nickname, they are in red going left to right. Well, make no mistake about it, Illinois Tech beat up in that first half, but Aurora with four goals in the final 246. Looking for a quick start. This one hops in and hits the post for Ben Strupp. Aurora maintains possession. I don't think that one got enough of an ooh from the crowd. I think they might have missed that one. Good pass here, Per. There's another post. Second effort, put in the back of the net past the diving Zane Handy. Brody McDonald's going to get this one. Aurora scores 58 seconds into the first, uh, into the third quarter to make it seven to two. What a sequence, one post, two posts. And it was a great feed from McDonald across, uh, rather from Purr across, and the ground ball just rolled right out in front. McDonald with the ground ball and the shot all in one motion. And so for Brody, his 14th of the season, he scored in three consecutive. Aurora by five, and now you wonder if Illinois Tech has enough firepower, when you consider that they have 78, now 80 goals on the season, and more than half of those have come in just two games. They scored 24 against North Central, and then 17 against Monmouth last Wednesday. And in every other contest, it's been eight or fewer. And so, Aurora only at seven, so it Certainly possible, but Illinois Tech would need a, another gear. And we haven't quite seen against top competition yet this season. But they get a turnover here. And you don't want to make too much of possessions this early. And really starts to feel like Illinois Tech needs a goal here. Down five. Nearly two and a half minutes into the third quarter. They've given up the last five. They don't get one here. Tangeman denied by Gianelli, who quickly heaves it the other way. Spartans in transition. This looks good. Ball out to the left side. It was into the feet of McDonald, who did well to stay with it. He'll pull it back and get set up. McDonald here on the near side. Up top to Nikhail Bayan. Bernstein behind the goal, Pura, and now Bayan on the left side. Looks for a screen, gets it, swings it up top. Strub from deep, scores. It's his fourth. Eight to two, Aurora. Strub is really piling them up now. 11.56 remaining. Bayan gets the assist here in the third quarter. And Aurora has opened itself up a six goal cushion. They have nearly doubled up Illinois Tech in shots. Good job. Nice job. 
They win another faceoff. They have won 11 of 13 today. Remember, Illinois Tech lost all 19 faceoffs on Saturday against MSOE. They've done better than that today, but it would have been impossible to do worse. And for much of the last quarter and a half, it's been almost entirely Aurora in the faceoff circle. Bayan on the left. Out to the left here. That's Bayan again. They're getting it back up top for Strub. He passes it to Strub. The hesitation, the shot, and Hamby says no. His eighth save to match the number of goals allowed. And he'll try to start it here. Turns it over to McDonald. The goal is open. He doesn't take it. Aurora instead matriculates it down to the post. Nehemiah Green put a check on Pura. The flag is up, and it ends with Zach Bernstein putting it in the back of the goal. Another flag comes in. I thought McDonald maybe should have just put one on right away. It ends up working out. Penalties will be assessed. It's 9-2. Bernstein has scored for the second time today. His 17th of the year. And it looks like that's going to be it for Zane Handy. Or actually, it looks like Handy's being penalized. Not being pulled so much as he's being told to take a knee. The rare goalkeeper penalty. So he'll be replaced here by Dominic Reed out of Strasburg, Pennsylvania. I have to assume that this is going to be a short-lived substitution. It's 9-2. to I would not think that this is a full-on switch here, but we'll see. Reed stays in the contest. But he indeed is in for his fifth appearance. He's played 45 minutes in four games, made six saves, allowed 10 goals. Still waiting on the penalties that have been assessed. The Illinois Tech is two players down here. Now they deploy their defenders here in a box formation. There's going to be a lot of room to shoot. First man up opportunities for Aurora here. Leader fires a shot wide. Still don't know what the penalties are or for how long, but by golly, they've been assessed. There's a shot from Bernstein that Reed turns aside, but the ground ball comes out in front. Bernstein scoops it off the post. Now Leader tries, Reed makes another save. Ground ball in front and another fantastic save by Reed on Bernstein from three feet away. But then a turnover here. A sensational save by the backup goalkeeper for Illinois Tech, who comes in in a tough spot. Illinois Tech trying to clear the other way. One penalty has expired. They've both expired. Dominic Reed, expert penalty killer for Illinois Tech. And now we'll see what Aurora can do here. Still with the ball. And a flag has come in on Illinois Tech. So it looks like this is going to happen again here coming up. Shot off the side of the net here. Reed will put the cross down on that. And now the penalties will be assessed. I know Yano Porter got one minute. I don't know about Zane Handy, although he was there as well, and looks like Handy is not coming back in. Well, maybe that was just for the penalty being assessed, but you know what? After the handful of saves that Dominic Reed just made, you kind of have to go with him right now. 
Off sides here, 30 seconds for Aurora. 0 for 1 on their first man up opportunity. Flag comes in, uh, whistle comes in rather. I'll reset the shot clock here. Under nine to play here in the third. It's nine to two Aurora. Well, Dominic Reed, his career high in saves, by the way, is four. Appeared in three games last season, one last year, or one two years ago, that is, in the abbreviated season. Now Aurora gets into its offense here. Again, it's just 30 seconds. Bernstein for McDonald will feed it down to the mouth of the goal. Centering feed hops in on Reed, turns it aside. The penalty will expire here, and Illinois Tech will clear its own end for a moment. I don't know if that'll count, actually. It turned it over as it came across the goal line, and Illinois Tech has given it away for the eighth time. Spartans back on offense, and this is going to be the obstacle for Illinois Tech. I, I think the defense has largely been there today, but they've been spending an increasing amount of time in their own end, and it's hard to score from this far away from the Aurora goal. Bernstein. Great pass by him. Tried to tuck it under the bar and he missed. Nearing the midpoint of the third, Aurora up seven. Leader for Bernstein out on the right wing. Pass to the left. Byan tries again. Reed, another save. Illinois Tech able to clear. Nice grab there by Meese to get possession for Illinois Tech. No big deal for the Illinois Tech goalkeeper coming in out of relief and has immediately installed the brick wall here for Illinois Tech. Uh, can they do anything offensively to make that meaningful? They're down seven. Down to seven minutes to play here in the third. Meese to his right around the screen. Good look here and skipped a shot wide as Gianelli went to the kick save. An NHL goalie from the 70s would have been proud of that form right there. A try here for Tangeman out on the left side. Shots right now, by the way. You have an opportunity to follow along with this at home. 39 to 17 for Aurora. It has been an onslaught here, particularly since halftime. And Illinois Tech loses possession. A nice job there by Leo Brock to get in there and take it away. St. Paul, Minnesota's freshman. The takeaway here. Shots since halftime, by the way, are 12 to 2 in favor of Aurora. And it looks like that is going to increase here as Aurora gets into its offense. Well, defense and goalkeeping has been a strength for Illinois Tech. Really just a flurry to begin the third quarter and before that a little flurry to end the second. You can't take those away. You might think, given how many shots Aurora has put on, and they might have a few more get through here. This one goes wide. Five hundred shot on goal percentage here for Aurora, though, which is a little bit below their season average of sixty percent. Forty shots, twenty have been on the cage. Hit four posts, five. Several. The goalie would tell you it's part of the equipment, of course. Trenary's pass deflected. Shot clock expires. And it stays nine to two here with just under five minutes to play in quarter number three.
puck's clear. side here and that is Tangeman with it. Another takeaway here for Aurora. Spartans on the attack here. And a cheer comes up for Mikhail Bayan as he brings it across. It's 340 and counting. 9 to 2 Spartans. Bernstein looking for his third today to his left. Good move to get space in the interior and rip the shot wide. Nifty, but the finish wasn't there. Aurora tries again, 26 on the shot clock. Here is Bernstein trying from his ankles. Sent that one wide of the goal. Leader for Bernstein steps into another, hits the side of the net. Mains 9 to 2, 303 to play in the third quarter. Two thirty nine. Here is Meese driving. His pass was behind Jonathan Vital and out of bounds. Turnovers are even at 10 apiece. So here comes Aurora. what Aurora can do this time down the field. So far, since Dominic Reed has entered the net, the cage has been closed. Final two minutes here of the third. Goes behind the goal, Pura. Out here for Andrew Bittner. And around the perimeter, Trineri finds Bittner up top. Spins, loses it. Nice job by Trineri to gather it up. Aurora tries again. Got 26 on the shot clock here. Young takes a shot, has it taken away by Rankin. Now Rankin today now with five ground balls, just one off of his career high. He is 25 on the season. And he's a part of this IIT youth movement. You look at some of their standout players here. I think Illinois Tech was able to clear here. They did not. Had 20 seconds, couldn't get it across center. Spartans back the other way, and Strub took a shot from behind by Bajorquez, but Strub able to win that battle. One minute to play in the third. Nine to two. Feed here to Trineri, who finally beats Dominic Reed. 10-2 Spartans, Trineri has his 10th of the season. And interestingly for Trineri, he had not had even a shot over his previous two games. Gets one off here, puts it in the back of the goal. Bernstein with the assist. It's a four-point day for Bernstein. And with 53.9 seconds left, it's going to require an enormous fourth quarter for Illinois Tech to get back in this one. 
I don't remember when the last time Illinois Tech won a faceoff was. And they don't get this one either. The last Illinois Tech faceoff win was with 55 seconds remaining in the first quarter, and they've only won two, both by faceoff violation today. It has been a mess for the Scarlet Hawks in that area. 30 seconds. Pass down to the doorstep for Pura. Wasn't able to turn and fire, and then this pass denied by Rankin. Karam's way out of here. And 16 seconds. Meaning in this third quarter. McDonald. Oh, nice try, and that one is turned aside by Reed, who has matched his career high with four saves. Just one goal allowed. Aurora had to uh, throw up a miracle there to try to get something quick. Doesn't happen, and time will expire here in the third quarter. Aurora adds four more in the third to go up 10-2 to two after three quarters here at Spartan Athletic Park on Illinois Tech. This is Aurora University men's lacrosse. lead here going to the fourth. 10 to two is their advantage. They will move left to right here in this fourth quarter. Illinois Tech right to left. Shots are 46 to 18 in favor of Aurora. 13 to 15 on faceoffs. A little hard to believe actually. You look at these numbers. It was two to two with three minutes to play in the second quarter. The last 18 minutes have been very kind to Aurora, able to get on track offensively. I think the conversation about this one after, I think in Chicago will be defense, great job. Offense will need a little more season. They have not been able to beat an Aurora defense that has been very good today. Bill Gianelli has been excellent as well with 10 saves. A couple of high quality chances, but for the most part Aurora has controlled the play, and when the AU defense has had to go to work, they have very much kept the Scarlet Hawks at bay. I don't know that Aurora will be happy with their Full performance there through maybe the first 25 minutes, but I think certainly the last 20 or so, uh, a lot to be pleased about. Shot here wide of the goal. As it's not me if you've heard this one, Aurora won the faceoff. Fyan, tough angle. And Reed makes the stop. Reed out of Strasburg, Pennsylvania, an alum of Lampeter Strasburg High School in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Which is
is just south of Berks County where I grew up, Ethan. You know, we get Pennsylvania on the broadcast here. I've got to find a way to get it in. The turnover here with Zach Bernstein with the steal. He tosses it ahead here for Dan Latta. Centering feed here, Trinari scores. 11 to two Spartans. Now Trinari now has six goals for his career against Illinois Tech in three games. Second of the day, 11th of the season. Had four goals in the opener against Dubuque. Another multi-goal performance here today. Face-off win for Mason Gates. Gates out of Elk River, Minnesota, a freshman. Actually went to high school with Eli Pangborn. So those two go back a little bit. Final... 13 minutes of play here. And with the lead stretched out here a little bit, might start to see a few new names circulate into the lineup. Strub out on the right side. Hurrah. Up top for Mitchell Young. Strub goes up top, swings it to the left. Here's a shot, and Brody McDonald has his second of the day. And it's opening up here for Aurora Samore in this fourth quarter. That is 10 straight for Aurora. Strub gets the assist. It's a six point day for the freshman. That's a career high for him. His two assists today match his total all season coming into this one. So he is piling it up. Illinois Tech with its first faceoff win outside of a violation today. That will likely fall into the too little, too late category here. But they get a chance to go on offense this time down the field. And really just haven't said enough of that here in the second half. It has been lopsided. The field very much tilted toward the Illinois Tech goal. Nearly turn it over here. Tangeman stays with it. Tangerman trying again here to get to the post. Another example, the Aurora defense just has not allowed a lot in high danger areas. Gianelli's made some good saves, but it's been a team effort down on this end of the field. 15th to shoot, Tangerman out to the right. Here's Bajorquez. He shoots. Gianelli gets a piece of that for his 11th save. Hawks keep it. The whistle blows. 10.51 to play in our fourth quarter. Benjamin near side, steps around a defender, shoots, missed the goal. Illinois Tech keeps it again. Brass has not scored today. Unusual. Doesn't score here, that one wide of the goal. Oh, Gianelli gets a piece of that as well. 
Well, Brass has scored in most of Illinois Tech's contests this season. Not the kind of season where you, you feel like it's inevitable to some degree. He's going to put one in the back of the goal, and it just hasn't <laughs> happened. And a massive hit in front as Tangerman was camped out in front and got drilled in front of the goal. And a clean hit as well. No penalty there. We can get another look here at who delivered the hit. It's a beauty. Aurora setting up here offensively. Bernstein jogging over to the near wing. Now turns the corner, dumps it off. Was looking for Trinari, and it ended up in the cross of Dominic Reed. So the Hawks go the other way. 9.07 left, 12-2 Aurora. Last goal for Illinois Tech was a while ago. Scored with 16 seconds remaining in the first quarter. To tie the game after Aurora went up earlier that minute, two to one, and you thought, well, game on today, folks. And it was not to be as Aurora four goals in the final 246 of the second and have not looked back. Eight and a half left. Curra here on the near side, behind the goal. Looking to wrap it around here, nothing there. Now another try, Brody McDonald. And he's got the hat trick and his 16th of the year. Sixth time McDonald has scored three or more in his young career. He's now scored seven goals in three games against Illinois Tech, plus four assists. And it is 13 to two with 8.02 left. Another face-off win for Aurora. And here is Zach Manuel who tried to take it right to the net. Lost it. It will end up with Henry Rankin. And he will retreat and give the Hawks a chance to clear. Now, I've not seen a ton of reserves just yet for Aurora. A turnover on the, or almost a turnover there for Illinois Tech. Tangeman able to stay with it. Home games on Saturday for both teams. Spartans host Marion at 2 o'clock. Edgewood at home. Uh, Illinois Tech at home against Edgewood. A flag comes in on Aurora. Shot turned aside by Gianelli. We'll get possession and the whistle. Another extra man opportunity for Illinois Tech. Now under 8% for the season, where it has been, to say the very least, a struggle. So Bosshart gets the penalty, 30 seconds here. So the Hawks will try to end a long drought. It was holding on Bosshart. Porter, out to the right, the shot wide. It was Brass trying to put one in the back of the net. Doesn't happen here. 
15 seconds left on the penalty. Tangeman. Tangeman. Again, as the penalty expires. And now Brass will try it. He can't get to the net. 13 to shoot. Hawks running out of time on this possession. Now Brass. And that's wide of the goal. Seven seconds to work with. Save made Gianelli. And so ends another difficult Illinois Tech possession. 5.50 to play. Scarlet Hawks have been able to generate a few more shots as a turnover. There will be Aurora keeping it. I stand corrected. All right, there we go. Illinois Tech will take possession right back. And Meese will try to jump into the play here. It's the third time Aurora has failed to clear today. Shot from distance. Ryan Arbor picks a corner. And a goal drought of nearly 40 minutes comes to an end. So 39 minutes and 52 seconds. And last time. In game clock terms, Illinois Tech on the back of the net. Arbor has his fifth of the year. And so it's 13 to three with 524 left. Oh, we have a nice crowd here. Here I'm trying to get the wind back in the Spartan sails here. Started with the Riverside City College Chamber Singers treating us to the national anthem. They made the trip all the way here from Southern California. And John Bayan, father of Aurora's own attack man, McHale, leading the way. And so we were happy to have them. Of course, it is National D3 week. And it is National Student Athlete Day as well. And Aurora on their way to celebrating that with a victory. Four and a half to play. In what has been a speedy game so far, folks. It's an hour and 28 minutes here to be nearly to the finish line. Large stretches, of course, without a goal in the first half. It was six to two at the break. And it was two to two, 27 minutes into the game. So it had a way of speeding along. Shot clock expiring, and Mitchell Young removes that one from the premises. I think that was clear out of here. Clear for Illinois Tech. And if you're the Scarlet Hawks, just trying to finish strong, do a few good things. A lot to be happy about. Some things, obviously, that need work. But a young team that has proven it can play a little defense against a high-powered offense. And you have to think that if Illinois Tech can add a little more offensively big save Gianelli here. I have to think if they can add a little more offensively, you know, have things going in the right direction. Of course, they've been a little unfortunate as well that in addition to Aurora playing great defense, Philip Gianelli has had his A game today. A few really good looks for Illinois Tech that Gianelli has 
flat out denied, and he has 15 saves today. Shots are 52 to 28, by the way. 235 left, 13 to 3 Aurora. Trenary hits the post. That one caroms all the way back up top for Leader, who takes it on the fly. Well, and that's another thing to keep in mind, folks. It, it could be 20 to 3 right now if Aurora has about six or seven shots about one more inch inward been close today. They've squared up a handful of posts and crossbars. Final minute, 53. Leader shoots and skips it in past Reed to make it 14 to 3. And the freshman ends a four-game goalless drought. His sixth of the year. One forty nine to play. Another face off win for Aurora, and they'll look to add to their total. Final 90 seconds of this one today. So again, Aurora home to Marion on Saturday at two o'clock. I'll follow women's lacrosse between Aurora and Mary and the Sabres in women's lacrosse have lost 30 in a row. Men's lacrosse, the Sabres are three and six. And one and one in knack play and that is the record they will bring into the contest. We are in the final minute. Aurora has outshot Illinois Tech today. At this moment, 54 to 28. No extra man goals today. Aurora 0 for 4, Illinois Tech 0 for 2. Ground ball is 44 to 21 in favor of Aurora. Aurora will spend the rest of this game down a man as a cross check has been assessed to looks like Connor Bolton. Bill Gianelli, 15 saves, three goals allowed. Zach Handy started for Illinois Tech. Man, how about 16 saves, three goals allowed? That might be the last one for Gianelli today. Zane Handy started for Illinois Tech, eight saves, nine goals allowed. Dominic Reed came in after Handy was assessed a penalty. Made six saves, allowed five goals. Aurora, 16 turnovers, 10 for, uh, 13 for Illinois Tech, eight Cost turnovers for the Spartans, five for IIT. Faceoffs 18 to three in favor of Aurora. Spartans clear 18 of 21 times today. Illinois Tech 25 of 19. As the final seconds tick off, and Aurora will complete a 14 to three victory over Illinois Tech to even their record at five and five and open up NAC play with a victory. Ben Strub, four goals, two assists today. Brody McDonald, three goals and an assist. Two goals, two assists for Zach Bernstein. Two goals and assists for Andy Trineri. Jimmy Gorecki and Carson Leader added goals for Aurora. Mikhail Bayan had an assist for Illinois Tech. It was Reed Tangeman, Ryan Arbor, and Yano Porter with goals. They were all unassisted. So Aurora, as I mentioned, five and five overall, one and zero in the NAC. Illinois Tech falls to three and six. They start NAC play zero oh and two in the time of the game, one hour and thirty-five minutes here at Spartan Athletic Park. We hope you'll join us on Saturday for more men's lacrosse here at Spartan Athletic Park. But for camera operator and 
AU sophomore Ethan Carmine for the entire Aurora University game day crew here today, led by Brian Kipley, our Director of Athletic Communications and Graduate Assistant Ali Texera. My name is Sean Fry. Aurora over Illinois Tech today, 14-3. to This has been Aurora University men's lacrosse right here. And athletics.aurora.edu.